watching Biography of the Millennium on A&E as we continue our countdown of the 100 most influential people of the last 1,000 years. He was initially turned down from film school, but he would become the storyteller to the world, the most powerful man in Hollywood. Jaws. Artist, magician, empresario, Steven Spielberg. I think Steven Spielberg should be on this list because he's an extraordinary creative man. That he has this incredible range of things that he's done. And I think the best is yet to come. Like a Dickens or a Disney, Spielberg is a master of the tale, thrilling millions with Close Encounters and Indiana Jones, and moving us with Saving Private Ryan and, of course, E.T. You know, he started off making these extraordinary, you know, adventures and phone, good. Yeah, points, yes. And uh, now it seems he's just, it, I think especially with Schindler's, it changed. He kicked into some deep level of himself, and it's been like that ever since. Steven Spielberg's artistry doesn't just entertain us, it reminds us on a global scale of humanity's potential and its pain. Without number 90 on our list, Steven Spielberg might never have lifted a viewfinder. Next time you pose for a family photograph, you can say cheese, but you should be saying Daguerre, Louis Daguerre. He invented the first practical method of photography, the daguerreotype, and gave us a new way of seeing through the lens of a camera. Photography captured a slice of the world and brought it home allowing us to see places and events in images more immediate and realistic than we'd ever seen before. Most dramatic step to date in women's campaign for equal rights, women who register and vote. Want they called her an anarchist. They called her a man-hater. But it's because of number 89, the sturdy Quaker named Susan B. Anthony, that women in the United States have the right to vote. In an 1872 election, she marched up to the ballot box and voted. She was immediately arrested and fined $100, which she refused to pay. Anthony became America's premier suffragette, focusing the country's attention on equal rights for women. Her struggle would win them the rights they cherish to this day. The New Mexico desert on a mid-July morning in 1945. Scientists are about to unleash a force unlike anything ever known. One blinding flash, and the world would never be the same. The atomic bomb was born, and the man described as its father, J. Robert Oppenheimer, would spend the rest of his life grappling with what he had done. Oppenheimer is number 88 on the Millennium 100. When World War II began, he was assigned to head the top secret Manhattan Project as America raced to build the bomb. Oppenheimer belongs on the list because he was the man who orchestrated it. He, he was the man, he was the director of the symphony orchestra. The orchestra played the symphony of fission, the symphony of making bombs. On August 6, 1945, the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan, killing more than 70,000 men, women, and children. The knowledge tortured Oppenheimer to his dying day. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another.
Imagine a world where no birds sing, a planet so poisoned that every sip of water, every bite of food could kill. Were it not for Rachel Carson, that might be our Earth. Rachel Carson, a quiet marine biologist, was the Paul Revere of the environmental movement. She sounded a warning about pesticides in her landmark book, Silent Spring. The chemical industry branded Carson a radical, a subversive. But her quiet eloquence and thorough research eventually won out. Congress heeded her warning and passed legislation to vastly restrict the use of pesticides. Unfortunately, by then, Rachel Carson was mortally ill with cancer. But she died changing attitudes and teaching the world how to treat our global home with respect. Banned in America, reviled in Ireland, but James Joyce, number 86 on our list, revolutionized modern literature. Joyce left his Irish birthplace early on for a life of European exile. Over the coming years, his writing would get more experimental, more radical. His masterpieces, Ulysses and Finnegan's Wake, are novels of such confounding language and style, experts are still struggling to decode them. I think that many people talk a great deal about James Joyce who've hardly managed to make their way through Ulysses and who probably, like me, have never read Finnegan's Wake. So he is more of a symbol, an icon, um, a national hero. He made difficulty fashionable. Joyce's novels shocked the public with their frank sexuality and wild mix of random thoughts and pure emotion. Literature hasn't been the same since. Here's great news about two wonderful Baraxo hand cleaning products. Actor, governor, president, number 85 on our list is Ronald Reagan. Reagan? Yeah, it didn't seem to me he belongs on the list. <laughs> ask, ask, ask Henry Kissinger that question. Yeah. He was exactly the right man for that period. To ignore the facts of history and the aggressive impulses of an evil empire to simply... Reagan makes our list because of his achievements in foreign policy. He is credited by many for hastening the downfall of the communist bloc. I think Ronald Reagan was a seminal figure in the uh, final collapse of the Soviet Union and in the beginning of the post-Cold War international order. Master of the photo op, Reagan stood at the Berlin Wall and challenged his Russian counterpart to do the right thing. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Reagan's demands and threats had an impact. The wall tumbled down and the Cold War was over. <laughs> 